it's that time of the week again. It's time for Programming by Stealth. And this week we have Tidbit 9. We've recorded this on October 10th, 2024. I'm your host, Allison Sheridan. And of course, I'm joined by your co-host, Bart Bouchatz. How are you doing today, Bart? I am doing very good today. I, I have had I've had a very good day of nerd fun that I'm sure people will hear about on the Nasilla Caster and something else at some stage. But it's it's been a day of fun. And as because it's been a day of fun. I didn't have time to write show notes for what we're planning to do. So I'm going to set a little scene here. This tidbit is perfectly timed because in the main feature, I guess we call it a main feature. In the main feature, we're about to revisit Git to learn about a very powerful feature of Git called submodules because they solve two problems. One of them is directly related to what we're doing in programming by stealth in terms of the XK past WD rewrite. And the other one is related to what myself and Alison do every second week, which is record segments for the Nocilicast podcast. And so we have two problems that we can both solve with submodules. So it seems like the perfect time to go back and learn that power feature of Git that I intentionally skipped because I thought we I thought we'd loaded our brains with enough. I, I thought we'd done <laughs> a lot of Git. Um, well, and this is something I'm really excited about too, this this particular tidbit that we're going to go into, but I'm also very excited about submodules solving a problem. Like Bart says, we eat the dog food by doing the show notes in Git, and yeah. I complain to Bart about it all the time. <laughs> it, I would say every week to week and a half, I'm telling him why I hate it, but it's forced me to learn how to use it and just get better and better at it over time. Because I, to be honest, I don't do that much programming. So it gets, it would get rusty real quickly, but he forces me to use it all the time. So we have new problems to be solved, but today we're going to play. We're going to have fun. We are. So we are going to learn that Git doesn't only live on your big, heavy computers. It also can live in your pocket or I guess wherever you do with an iPad. Um, basically, iOS has evolved since its very early days. And you can now do full on Git coolness, including the submodules we're going to learn about in future installments, right on your iPhone or on your iPad. And this came as a surprise to me uh, because when iOS released, one of its selling points, and it's still a selling point, is that it was a security first architecture. Steve Jobs felt that the user should never know that there was a file system. So the uh, devices will be really easy to use. And under the hood, every app lives in its own little playpen all by itself. They're called sandboxes is the jargon word, but I'm gonna call them a little playpen. So when you install your favorite text editing app, it gets a little playpen where you can save files for it. And then when you install a different app, it gets its own little playpen and it keeps its files there. And so in my brain, that's not good for Git because in my brain, you have a Git client and that gets files onto your iPhone and then they're in the Git client's little playpen. And then you get your favorite text editor and you go to open the files, only it's in a different playpen. So it has no idea about the cool toy sitting in the other playpen. And that would never work. So. In the original iPhone, you would have needed a single app that was simultaneously a great Git client and the perfect text editor for every type of file you plan to work in. So a great JavaScript editor, a great Perl editor, a great Markdown editor, a great plain text editor. <laughs> I, I don't know about you, Alison, but how opinionated are you about your text editors? <laughs> all of them have different uses and I have to keep them all on my machine at the same time. So no, there's no perfect one. Exactly. That's the sign of a true programmer. If you're a real coder, you have not a text editor. You will laugh at the idea of a text editor. You have <laughs> millions of text editors. It does seem like a disease. It didn't stop evolving. If you want to not use the power of iOS, you can continue to pretend that there is no file system. You can continue to pretend that iOS does not, under the hood, have exactly the same file system as your Mac does. But if you don't want to pretend, Apple have allowed you to take the blue pill, if I'm going to mix all of my metaphors together here, and actually have a look a little bit under the hood. They don't let you all the way in, but they let you a little bit under the hood. And that's the Files app that is now a standard part of iOS. The wonderfully named, try Google it, the Files app, like the Photos app, <laughs> like the Contacts app. Oh, so helpful. Ooh, you're on mute there, Alison. Sorry. Yeah, along with uh, mail, calendar, photos, like you said. Yeah. So the Files app lets you see all the playpens, and the playpens will have the little icon of the app that made the playpen or that the playpen belongs to. 
But there's a section called iCloud files, which is where you can put files that you want to sync across all of your devices. Or for our purposes, there's a section called on my iPhone or on my iPad. And those are your local files. That is like a local folder on your Mac. And so if you, you can make folders in there, you can move files around in there, you can rename files. It's, it's like a little mini finder. So you can make a folder in there and call it my Git repo. And the Let second me tell you piece why of you magic. Do it there. Because, sorry, we're going to just pause there for a second. I don't know if you remember, mm -hmm. what, but when you were first teaching me Git, I thought, you know what would be per perfect is if I put my Git Back. repos in iCloud. And uh, to say that was a failure would be an understatement. I mean, it, it trying to do syncing while Git was trying to do syncing, not syncing and only pulling and pushing. And it was, it was a nightmare. So you don't want your Git repos in anything that's being synced by something else. Don't put it in Dropbox. Don't put it in Google Drive. Don't put it in OneDrive. Put it on yeah. your iPad and on your Mac. Exactly. So this is why the on my iPhone or on my iPad is where you want to be. And the second piece of the magic, so the files app lets you, the human, poke around, but Apple also provided APIs for developers who make apps to allow those apps to ask for permission from you, the human being, to leave the playpen. The app can't do it without you pushing, I say pushing, tapping, right? If no human taps, the app is trapped in the playpen, but there is a mechanism where the app can ask the human to let it out. And then the human goes and picks a folder. And then what's happening is the operating system is saying there is a teeny tiny pinhole in this in this little sandbox. And this one app is allowed to that one folder that the human being went tap open. So when you use that okay. file picker to open an app, you are granting the app access out of its playpen to that one file or folder that you tapped on. So if you give it a folder, then everything in that folder, including all the subfolders, is now available from the app. And so you can now have a Git app that you say you have permission to use this local folder and then it can do its Git magic and check out 20 million branches and all that kind of cool stuff. And it'll actually make a little dot Git folder under the hood, just like it would on your Mac, but it's a hidden folder, so you won't see it. And you can do all of your branches and all of the stuff you're used to doing in your Git client. And that will now be sitting in your iPhone on a local folder. And then you get a good text editor that supports the files API. And then you go into your favorite text editor and go either open or link. So a lot of the text editors will let you link a folder so that the next time you open the text editor, it's in your list of possible files waiting for you always. Oh. oh, okay. And so if you link your Git repository in your text editor of choice, then you just open the text editor, edit away to your heart's content. And then when you're ready to commit, you open your Git app and you commit or pull or push or whatever it is you want to do. And that's just like what I do on the Mac, right? I have... Git Kraken is my preferred Mac, Git client on the Mac. So I use Git Kraken to push and pull and get my stuff. And then I open up VS Code at the moment is my IDE du jour. Um, so I work away in, in there. Although actually, that's only for PowerShell, which I'm doing a lot of in work. Uh, actually, no, I, I'm still using, oh, what's the name of that lovely Markdown editor we like? It's Typora. open right now. Typora, thank you. I was going to, why don't I look in the menu bar? Yeah, Typora, there it is. <laughs> so, I, you know, on my, I use Typora, I edit away, and then I go back to Git Kraken. On my iPhone, I use an app called Textastic, um, which is a sort of a portmanteau of text and fantastic. Textastic. Um, yeah. And so, and a Git client called Working Copy. And this is where we have to give a hat tip to Nocilla Castaway extraordinaire, Jill of Kent. There may or may not be Woods, and they may or may not be north of Kent, but not the same Jill. This is Jill of Kent, not Jill of the North Woods, or from the North Woods. Wait, Jill from the North Woods, Jill of Kent. This is Jill of Kent. Yes, I think I got it right, but you definitely got it right, so we'll go with what you said. So, so that she told us, us a long time ago that we could do this, right? That we could do yes, yes on, our, on our iPads and iPhones. Yeah, and I've been doing it behind the scenes without telling you for at least a year. And I know that Jill told us even before then, but I I have only so much time for experimenting and I have to prioritize things. And it's been, you know, you know that list of things I really should, dot, dot, dot. This get on iOS. Because I thought this is complicated, but actually turns out, well, it is. It is still a little complicated because working copy has the advantage of being really powerful. And the disadvantage of suffering from what I call by Linux nerd for Linux nerd programming, it 
the UI is a little rough at times. Well, you know, it's it's odd. It's it's pretty. So it's not like you're, you know, it doesn't look Linuxy. It doesn't look, uh, you know, um, Cold War era program or design. The design is very pretty, but the icons either make no sense or they're not <laughs> labeled. Or it turns out if you press on the word, you get something different than if you press on the icon that's next to the word, you get something completely different. So we're going to try to be fairly specific on this. Um, by the way, uh, Textactic. Textastic is ten dollars, and uh, it runs on the Mac, the iPhone, and the iPad. I don't know if you have to try it separately. And then uh, working copy, I think I made a note on that of what that costs. Uh, that's fourteen ninety nine for the Pro version. Oh. In order to do it, fifteen dollars. Okay, good. Well, not good, but yes. And there, there are probably, in fact, there are certainly other alternatives. This is the path I've gone down. So this is an example of, as opposed to the only way to, because basically okay. this model, a Git client plus a local folder plus a text editor will work because the magic is the local folder acting as the bridge to connect everything together. So as long as you have a text editor that uses folders and a Git client that uses folders, you're away. These are just the two I'm using. So. Right, so big picture wise, that is the setup. Make a local folder, clone into it, edit it in your favorite text editor. That That is big picture, all we're doing. But there is a walkthrough of how to do this using working copy and Textastic. And I'm going to, you could use any Git server, but I'm going to be using GitHub because that's where I live. And hey, we've, we've all sort of gotten, made our home there while doing the PBS series, because that's what we use for all of our examples once we learned about remote repositories in the main, main feature. So in order for this to work, it's just like on your Mac, you're going to have to have your SSH keys and stuff. So inside working copy, you can make an SSH key and then it'll give you the public key to stick into your GitHub. And then you can check out, sorry, you can clone repositories and so forth with your SSH key, just like you do to your Mac. But now you're doing it to your little iOS device. And yeah, I don't the remember editor. the specific step. I've gone through these instructions uh, after Bart wrote up the, the structure of it. And some parts were hard and that part wasn't. I don't remember exactly how it worked, but I remember it going, uh, yeah, you want some SSH keys? Sure. Okay. And it authenticated with my face and did it. So I didn't have yes. to do much to get into it, but I did have to do something. I think I had to look at my face ID. Yeah, and I have very much yada yada it in the show notes because by the time I got as far as writing up these instructions to myself, I'd long ago set up working copy and I couldn't get back to zero. So I sort of said prerequisite, get working copy connected to your Git server of choice. It could be GitHub, it works. Um, but uh, yeah, I'm afraid that is an exercise for the listener or the reader. Um, there is no viewer, just listener. Yeah, it, it did walk me through uh, fairly easily. I, I, I did it hours ago and I can't remember how I did it. So it was easy because I remember all the hard parts. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. That's exactly how it works. So assuming you have those prerequisites, the first thing to do is to go to the files app and make your local folder. So basically you open the files app, which you may or may not have ever used. And then you go to on my iPhone or on my iPad, which is a top level area within the files app. You may see other areas. If you're a Dropbox user, you'll probably see an area for Dropbox. You'll probably see an iCloud area, but there's going to be one of those areas labeled on my iPhone or on my iPad. And in there, click the button to make a new folder and name it whatever you like. Just remember what you named it. Um, I start mine with git dash and then whatever it is I want to do. So, so in this case, you... I called mine, as I went through it, I called it git PBS. So if we can just use that terminology, so we have something Perfect. that's the local folder that we made uh, was git PBS. Perfect. So that folder now exists on your iPhone. So the next step is to go into working copy and tell working copy that we would like to start using that folder as a Git repository. And so working copy can either check stuff out into its own little playpen, which is what happens if you go, you click the plus button, which used to be a plain old plus, but then they made it complicated by making it be a working copy's fingerprint icon with a teeny well, tiny plus. This is where we're, we're going to be uh, actually confusing things. I think we ended up actually, no, you're right. You're right. It was the, it yeah. was the fingerprint with the plus. 
But it, yeah. it, you got to get into the right place to find that fingerprint with the plus. Well, it's at the top level. So the first time it's easy, because the first time you open the app, you're at the top level. What you'll find is it's folders inside folders inside folders in working copy. And it's very hard to find your way to the top. I find anyway. Mm -hmm. But when you open back, it back, first, back, you're back, at back, the top. Back. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So when you're at that top and you click that little plus, well hidden plus icon, one of the options is to clone a repository, which sounds like what you want. Clone. Oh, yeah, great. I'll do that. That will that will clone, but it will clone into the playpen that belongs to working copy, not into a generic folder. Yeah, this is what Allison did when she followed the instructions. And after I was done, I was like, okay, I made that, that Git uh, PBS folder and there's nothing in it. How am I looking at the files? And back out when you're looking at the files app where you can see iCloud and Dropbox and on my iPhone or on my iPad, there's now a new one called uh, working copy. And so the files are in, they're, they're sandbox inside working copy, which is fine if you don't want to use an external text editor. But the point of this is to try to do both. That's kind of what Bart yes. is, is trying to teach us here. So don't clone the repo, which seems like the obvious thing to do. It does, doesn't it? Yeah. So instead you want to link to external folder and that will give you the file picker and let you navigate to the folder you just made. And then you select yeah, it and you're so effectively... So you, so you, you hit the, the fingerprint with the plus on it, you hit link external repository, and then you hit directory. So you're taking the external repository and linking it to this directory that you just created out in the files app. Yeah. Perfectly clear. Totally clear. So what you then have when you've done that link is you then have a local Git repository. That is as if you had just gone Git in it on your Mac and never told it about any other server anywhere, just into any empty folder, it went Git in it. That's the equivalent of what you've just done there. So now you have a completely empty Git repository. So the next thing you have to do is tell that completely empty Git repository that you would like to pair it because a Git is a peer-to-peer -peer relationship. So you want to add a remote to use the Git lingo, which is going to be your server or GitHub in our case is our server. And so you've got to then do a little bit of jiggery pokery to get to that stage. So when you're going in to, when, you, when you're going into that newly linked directory, you're going to have to tell working copy that while we're using this empty Git repository you've just made, I need you to use this particular username and password that we created earlier, which is called an identity is the official jargon. And this is where we get into this bio Linux for Linux for the first time, because you have to click on the word configuration on well, one of these steps. Back up. You, you're going, you're going, to, you're going a little bit too far here. Uh, let's, okay. let's back up just a minute here. So, um, We've we've created this linked folder that's that's in the files app. And by the way, it gets a little link next to it if you've done it right. If you've done it wrong, it yes. doesn't. So so what we're gonna need to do is we're gonna we need to tell this to be connected to our repo on GitHub. So in order to yes. do that, you wanna go into that linked shared folder first, which I didn't do the first time. So you wanna go yes. into it. And now you're going to see a page that has a whole bunch of stuff on it. And one of the things is going to be your username on GitHub, for example, maybe. Uh, you know, mine says podfeed at users.noreply.github.com. I don't know where no reply comes. So but that's let's the back up a second. We'll so these, these people are going to be arriving at a completely empty new folder. So all they're going to see is one thing at the top that says repository as the English. And then it's going to have a Chevron to the right. And that Chevron is disconnected from the word repository. It looks like one big button. If you click on the Chevron, it does one thing. If you click on the word repository, it does something completely different. And this drove myself and Alison crazy in the pre-show because we couldn't figure out how I had figured out what to do because we both accidentally clicked on the wrong half of the apparently single button. But yeah, you click so on the it word says repository. repository. It says repository, status and configuration on kind of the left side. And on the right side, it shows a thing that looks like branches and a chevron wow. to the right. Once you have gotten all of this stuff linked together, that's a fun little place to go look at. It's basically the, the branch tree that you're used to seeing in a regular Git repo. That's lovely, but it's going to be empty 
if you click it before you right. actually connect up to your repo. So you want to click on repository, and that's where you're going to be able to see one identity or more. Well, you're going to have to click the configuration button next, and then you're going to see a list of identities. And if there's only one identity, it looks like it's already selected because you only see one, but it isn't selected. Because mm -hmm. when you click on it, it gets a tick box. Now it's selected. Yeah. And there's no save button. So at this point, I was scratching my head again, but you just well, back out of it. How you figured out to tap that is a miracle. So I'm you're not on the sure configuration it was page. Quick. <laughs> <laughs> I'm looking at his instructions going, he's telling me to tap on my identity. There's my name. Okay, I'll, I'll tap it. And all of a sudden this big checkbox come, comes open and I'm like, oh, now I've told it, pick that one. Yeah. Yeah, it took me a while. I, I don't know how, how many, but not Boy Scout safe words, I believe is the phrase you prefer. <laughs> there may have been yeah. some shouting. Anyway, there's no save button. Once you've ticked it, it's ticked. So now you hit the back button to go back to where you were. And now we're ready because we know about a username and password. So now we're ready to actually go and connect to a remote server. So there's a blue button. So you're going to see a section labeled remotes, which is actually a list, but it's a list of zero items. So it doesn't look like a list yet. It just says remotes and then a blue button, add remote. That's the button yes. we want. And you can click that button and then simultaneously you want to switch to Safari and go navigate to your GitHub repository and copy the SSH URL for the repository you want to clone. You want you want to you know you want to add to this folder, and once you have that in your clipboard, then you paste that in after you hit the add repository button, and now working copy is going to call the server origin, which is what we're used to seeing inside Git Kraken, right? We we see GitHub as right. being called origin. Let me let me stop you for just a second. So so he's right. You hit the blue button that says uh, you want a new remote and you want to paste in the URL for the, the SSH URL. There's a whole bunch of other buttons there. Don't, don't touch Ignore. anything. It says fetch, merge, push, synchronize, name, allow fetch, allow push, test, uh, create repo, which is kind of interesting. So that might be useful later. But all you want to do is tap on, on URL, paste it in, and I'll go back again. Yeah. <laughs> and now... It, you will see it sitting there under remotes, it'll say origin. And then you still have the blue button because you could in theory add infinitely many remotes, right? There are scenarios where you mm -hmm. might have a dev server and a production server as separate remotes. That's a real world scenario that's quite common. And then you can push well, I've pull. got Steve Matan's, Matan's uh, remote in Git Kraken. I could do it here. Oh, exactly, precisely. Yes, exactly, exactly that kind of thing. So you now have told it there's a URL and it's your remote called origin, but it won't show you any branches yet because it hasn't actually asked GitHub anything. All it's done is just said, okay, I know you exist. I don't know anything about you. And the Git command to ask a server to tell you about itself without actually doing anything, without actually making any changes to any of your files is a fetch. It's like a non-destructive, it's half a pull. And the half you're missing is the half that changes your files which is a good half mm -hmm. not to do. So you just do the fetch. And at that point in time, your Hang iPhone will on. know about those branches. Hang on. Let's talk about how hard it is to find the fetch button. So on the iPhone, in the upper right hand corner, as you're look, you're still, you've just, you've just hit add remote and you've come back. So it knows about the remote. On the iPhone, there's a three dot menu and it's got commit, revert, merge, fetch, pull, and push. So yeah. we want to hit fetch right there. But when yeah. you're looking at the iPad, the three dot menu does not have any of those things in there. It has status, location, and customized toolbar. However, it's because it's got a bunch more space for a nice little toolbar. But there's no way to know what the icons in that toolbar mean because they don't have little words under them. So you don't yeah. know which one's fetch and which one's pull. And I thought maybe customized toolbar would let me turn on the labels for the buttons, but no. And it's not like the, the Mac where you can hover and get a little tooltip, tells you what that button does. You have to just indiscriminately start pushing buttons. So I'll tell you what it looks like. Fetch is a down arrow inside of a box. Straight down arrow. Because we're going to come to the yeah. curvy one a little bit. <laughs> yeah. So an interesting technique is that in the iOS app, it has the word and the icon. So if you have a, an iPhone and an iPad, you could use the iPhone to learn the icons. And then the <laughs> icons do exist on the iPad version. So let me ask, why don't we pull? Why, why do we fetch instead okay. of pulling right away? 
So right now, assuming you've followed on for a completely empty repo, your local branch isn't connected to a specific upstream branch yet because it doesn't even know what branches exist in GitHub because we haven't actually asked it to go and fetch the list. It wouldn't pull main by default? Maybe, but there's no Git reason it would because we haven't actually <laughs> explicitly connected to... So a push and a pull only makes sense on a local branch that is connected to a remote branch. And we do that connection by starting on the remote and checking it out. But we haven't started on a remote because we haven't actually got the list of what's available. We haven't got the menu. So we haven't ordered from the menu. Yeah, we don't have the menu. So that's what we fetch. We fetch to get the menu. And then okay. we can use the icon to show us all the branches. And after we fetch, when we click on that icon to show us all the branches, it will show us the remotes. And it'll show us basically the the local branches, which is just going to be one called ma main, and it'll show us the remote ones. And then if we click remote main or any other branch, and we say check out, that's going to connect the two together. And from that point in time, push pull is all like normal. Okay, wait a minute. How did I do? Oh, we we pressed on branch. We pressed on branch. Yeah, to get to that, and that lets us see. And switch to the one we want. Okay. And then check out. Okay. And once you've checked out, the act of checking it out means you now get a local copy of that branch that is connected to that specific remote because you started on the remote and said, check this remote out. And so now working mm -hmm. copy has made a permanent link between those two. And so now when you pull, it knows where to pull from because it's linked. And when you push, it knows where to push to because it's linked. So now forevermore, push and pull make perfect sense because they are now connected branches. And so away you go. Okay. Now you're in normal. So lab. now we pull, and the pull is the bendy arrow, but it, it yes. bends down and to the right. What you're Just, actually doing with a pull yes. is two git operations. You're saying, dear server, tell me all the commits you have, and take the most recent one and merge it into whatever is sitting in this folder now. So yeah, it's bendy with a line under it. So in other words, don't just take stuff and have it go nowhere, which is the down arrow. Take stuff and put it into what I'm working on now. So it's basically from the cloud and in is how I mentally visualize it. I don't know. I don't know if that helps. It's a down arrow and it's not only yeah. down, it's down and into something. And the something is your local branch. So the one that means push might be the up bendy arrow to the left with the yes. with the line under it. I would imagine so. No, that's merge. Duh. <sighs> Yeah, I haven't so got a mnemonic for that one. Fetch is a down arrow. Push is an up arrow. It shouldn't be. Pull it's, is it's, I'm bendy sorry. down to There's the right no with the horizontal line. There's no consistency here. Oh, this by, merge by geeks for up. geeks. Yeah, well, merge kind of makes sense because you've got these two things. Right. Revert makes sense. It's an arrow <laughs> that goes back in itself. That one I'm going to grant them. That one is, makes sense. Yeah. <laughs> it looks like undo. It looks like undo, which is what it is. Run away, right? Revert is the run away button. <laughs> okay. Oh. And git is wow. like a message icon. Or sorry, commit is like a message icon. That's also fair. Yeah. So you should. Which kind of makes sense because you're going to do a commit message. Yes. Oh, do you, have you found the other little wonderful thing? By default, when you hit commit, it doesn't select any files and you have to kick the tick boxes every time? Uh, no, I have not yet committed a change. Ah, okay. When you do, you'll type all of your text and you'll go to hit commit and it'll be grayed out and you won't know why. And it's because you have to go down to the list of changes and tick the box next to the file you'd like to commit. It doesn't automatically choose okay. everything. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to fix uh, a typo. Yeah, I'm sure you found something I spelled wrong. Oh, pff. Yeah, that's <laughs> no right. problem. Uh, shockingly, it's a hyphen. Um, okay, Did so I, I've, Too many I've or too few? Uh, in this case, too many. You, what we've determined is Mark no, has a basically a conservation of, of hyphens. Um, okay, so I've, <laughs> I've done one. So I guess I got to push the commit button. Mm -hmm. And then it wants a message summary. And I'm going to say feet, not F-E-E-T, F-E-A-T, no. typo. Before you do anything, I want to draw your attention to two things because you're now a guinea pig. 
So there are two things that may or may not be obvious. So depending on whether or not you've used the app a lot already, is automatically push selected or not selected? It is not. There's an amend toggle and a push toggle sitting next to the word commit. So make sure so, you have commit set to push. So that otherwise, when you well, hit this no. commit, it... No, no, no. Maybe I okay. want to commit and just keep it local, right? You might. Okay. I never do. Okay. Because I'm on my iPhone, I just want to say, go up to the cloud. Alice needs these typos quickly. Right, but let's say I'm I'm halfway through doing something and I'm going to have lunch. I want to commit. Okay. It's essentially like saying save, right? I've saved Fair. what I've done and I know what I remember what I've done and I might want to come back. But so if I want to, in this case, I do want to push it and then I want to hit commit, but it's going to yell at me because I haven't selected anything, I bet. Yeah. You need to stage at least one file to commit. Well, that's what I have to do and get cracking. I have to select every file one by one that I need to, I want to commit. Yeah, but the button is grayed out. Somehow in Git Kraken, the interface makes me do the right thing automatically, where here the interface makes me pound the button and then then I get confused. I never remember to commit, to uh, stage the changes before I hit commit. And I, and I watched Helma doing it and she did the same thing. She committed and then I think it was Helma or maybe it was you. Okay, so it says unable to push changes. That could not be fast forwarded. Tap to merge in changes from origin and retry push. That means there was a Origin pull waiting change. for I, you that you hadn't taken. That's fine, no, though. I, you can let it do that. I, hang on. Hang on. I literally just pulled. Let's see. Let me pull again. Pull received something that had one conflict from tap to resolve. Oh, good, good gracious. I don't know. I, let's not. Well, okay. it's angry you, about I, something. I was going to say, w w with all of our faffing about, I think I may have done a commit after you did a pull or something on the iPhone. Okay. Given, given our past history with merge conflicts, I don't think we're going to try to resolve that on the iPhone live on the air. I think that may... Oh, I'm going to do it. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, I can always roll back, of course. This is, this is the thing I always tell you, yes. no matter how much you mess up in Git, we can always just go back in time. We have a time machine. It only goes one way, which is the back way, not the, not the interesting forward yeah. way. Oh, wouldn't that be great? Check out next week's show notes, please. <laughs> 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 what should the first sentence be for a long time? Wait, no, that's not. Uh, security first design? Should that be in the first sentence? Uh, for a long time, I assumed iOS couldn't provide a good Git experience because of its security first design. Okay. So now that's the one I'm going to get rid of. Okay. I will play with this later, but at least now we've tried it once. We have a vague idea how to do it. Yes. I don't think that's terrible. I mean, no. like I said, I have to select it and get, get cracking. That's not terrible. And now that we have successfully connected the remote and the local branches, now we're in normal land. Now it's just like in get cracking. We push, we pull, we commit. We're now doing everything we'd normally do. We can change branches and all that kind of stuff. And when you go into the files app, you can see everything in the files app that is in that repository. So if you check out a different branch and you go back to the files app, all the files will have changed. So now you can open your favorite text editor of choice, like Textastic, and just connect it to that same folder. And then you edit in Textastic. Say, you know, you don't even have to save it's iOS. You just leave the app and go to work and copy and come in. Or go to work and copy and pull and then go back to Textastic and all your changes are waiting for you. Yeah, yeah. There have been a lot of times that I've wanted to do something on my iPad like this, and I'm just like, oh, I'm too lazy to go get my Mac, and I haven't been able to. Yeah. So it's something the listeners may or may not know, depending on what other shows they listen to, but I do a lot of the show notes while I'm out walking, which is a skill I have picked up over the years, and I haven't, I'm going to knock on all the wood, I haven't run into anything in years. I may have done a few times in the early days. And the key to making all of this work is that I can just push and pull using working copy, and so I'll, I'll basically, I'll be working away at the comfort of my Mac until it's time to get some exercise. And then I'll push and then I'll take out my cool clicks keyboard uh, for my iPhone, plug the iPhone into it, go out for a walk and using work and copy, pull, edit away. And then when I, you know, as I approach my front door, I'll push, go make myself a nice cup of tea, sit down in front of the Mac, pull and carry on. And at some point in the middle, I'll have told Alison, hey, fix all of my typos. And then Alison have corrected 20 million things. <laughs> and then I'll do it all again. And little by little, that's how, that's how the sausage gets made, folks. <laughs> there you go. And, and I like this a lot better than the, uh, what was it, one week that you thought doing the show notes in uh, Apple Notes was a good idea. <laughs> it was briefly a good idea. 
until it came to the sharing part. Actually, no, we could share it fine. We couldn't get it out of notes. It was, you could see my changes. I could see your changes, but it was trapped. Yeah. Yeah. Oh God. It's not, not a good, not a good design. No. It's well, this so is close. fun. Uh, I know this wasn't a detailed every single step tutorial, but I think uh, everyone's clever enough to probably get through it with the, uh, with the hot tips we have about things like, Press on 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 the uh, the word, not the icon. Things like that. Yeah, and also the chances are there's other apps you might prefer to use instead of these apps, right? The, the real thing I'm hoping people take away is that remember the power of the Files app to let you do way more on your iPhone than you remember being able to do because you didn't used to be able to, but now you can because we are on what iOS 18 or I don't know. I've lost track. Where are we? Is it 18? 18 is the newest one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We've come a long way. We've come a long way because what copy and paste was three. <laughs> I forget exactly how soon that was, but yeah, we have come a long way. This is, I, they've come out with a good way, I think, to be able to uh, marry the security model with the, uh, a little more freedom than we used to have. So that's fun. Yeah. All right. Well, this was a, a light lift, actually. I think this was fun. I am a little cross with you for taking uh -oh. Jill's advice and figuring it out and using it for a year before you told me you were doing it. I, I'm cross about that, but uh, at least I'm happy today. Okay. Well, good, folks. And remember, the most important thing, lots and lots of happy computing. If you learn as much from BART each week as I do, I'd like you to go over to lets-talk.ie and press one of the buttons over there to help support him. He does 98% of the work here. I'm just the stooge that listens to him and asks the dumb questions. If you go over to lets-talk.ie, you can support him on Patreon, you can donate via PayPal, or you can use one of his referral links. I really hope you'll go over and help him out. In the meantime, you can contact me at Podfeet or check out all of the shows we do over there over at podfeet.com. Thanks for listening and stay subscribed.